we want to evaluate the limits of the rational functions as x approaches infinity. We will take a look at two methods for determining these limits. The first method, we will analyze the degree of the numerator and denominator, and the second method, we'll take a more general approach. Let's begin by identifying the degree of the numerator and denominator of each rational function. For the first limit, the degree of the numerator is four, the degree of the denominator is five. For the second rational function, the degree of the numerator is seven, the degree of the denominator is also seven. And for the third rational function, the degree of the numerator is five, the degree of the denominator is three. And now let's take a look at our notes. If the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator, the limit is zero. So notice how for the first limit, the degree of the denominator is five, five is greater than the degree of the numerator, which is four, and therefore the limit is equal to zero. This is because the denominator, which has a higher degree, is growing faster than the numerator as x approaches infinity, and therefore the values approach zero. Number two, if the degree of the numerator and denominator are the same, the limit is the ratio of the leading coefficients. So for the second example, the degree of the numerator and denominator are both seven, and the coefficient of x to the seventh is one, and therefore the limit is equal to one divided by two, or one half. Number three, if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, the limit approaches plus or minus infinity and does not exist. For the third rational function, the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, and therefore the limit approaches either positive or negative infinity, and the limit doesn't exist. Well, because x is approaching positive infinity, two x to the fifth is positive, and so is nine x cubed, and therefore the limit approaches positive infinity, which again does indicate the limit doesn't exist. So this is how we can determine the limits at infinity of rational functions when the numerator and denominator are polynomial functions. But let's also take a look at a second approach. For the second approach, we divide the terms in the numerator and denominator by the highest power of the variable in the denominator. So looking at this first limit, the highest power of the variable in the denominator is x to the fifth. We will divide each of the six terms by x to the fifth. In the second limit, the highest power of x in the denominator is x to the seventh. We divide every term by x to the seventh. And for the third limit, the highest power of x in the denominator is x cubed. We divide everything by x cubed. Let's go ahead and do that. So for each rational function, we divided each term by the highest power of x in the denominator. So for this first rational function, we divided every term by x to the fifth. For the second rational function, we divided every term by x to the seventh. And for the third rational function, we divided each term by x cubed. The next step is to simplify and then determine the limit. So for the first limit, three x to the fourth divided by x to the fifth simplifies to three divided by x minus Three x squared divided by x to the fifth simplifies to three divided by x cubed, plus eight divided by x to the fifth doesn't simplify. In the denominator, two x cubed divided by x to the fifth simplifies to two divided by x squared, plus x to the fifth divided by x to the fifth simplifies to one, plus three divided by x to the fifth doesn't simplify. And now from here, remember, if we have a fraction where the numerator is a constant and the denominator contains a variable, where the variable approaches positive or negative infinity, the value approaches zero. So three divided by x approaches zero as x approaches infinity. Three divided by x cubed approaches zero as x approaches infinity. And eight divided by x to the fifth also approaches zero as x approaches infinity. In the denominator, two divided by x squared approaches zero as x approaches infinity. One is not affected by x. And three divided by x to the fifth approaches zero as x approaches infinity. Simplifying, we now just have zero divided by one, which is equal to zero, which is the same limit we found using the degrees. And now for the second limit, we divided everything by x to the seventh, so now we simplify. In the numerator, x to the seventh divided by itself simplifies to one, 
minus 3x squared divided by x to the seventh simplifies to 3 divided by x to the fifth, plus 8 divided by x to the seventh doesn't simplify. In the denominator, 7x cubed divided by x to the seventh simplifies to 7 divided by x to the fourth, plus 2x to the seventh divided by x to the seventh simplifies to 2. And then we have plus 3 divided by x to the seventh doesn't simplify. And now determining the limit, 1 is not affected by x. 3 divided by x to the fifth approaches 0 as x approaches infinity. 8 divided by x to the seventh approaches 0 as x approaches infinity. In the denominator, 7 divided by x to the fourth approaches 0, and so does 3 divided by x to the seventh as x approaches infinity, and 2 is not affected by x. Simplifying, we just have 1 divided by 2, which is equal to 1 half. The same limit we found above. And for our last example, we divided everything by the highest power of x in the denominator, which was x cubed. And now we simplify. 8x squared divided by x cubed simplifies to 8 divided by x, plus 2x to the fifth divided by x cubed simplifies to 2x squared, plus 8 divided by x cubed doesn't simplify. In the denominator, 9x cubed divided by x cubed simplifies to 9, minus x squared divided by x cubed simplifies to 1 over x, plus 3 divided by x cubed, it doesn't simplify. In the numerator, 8 divided by x approaches 0, as well as 8 divided by x cubed, as x approaches infinity. Notice 2x squared is going to approach infinity, as x approaches infinity. In the denominator, 9 is not affected by x. 1 divided by x approaches 0, and so does 3 divided by x cubed, as x approaches infinity. Simplifying, notice how we have the form of infinity divided by 9, which is still infinity, which matches what we found using the degrees. I hope you found this helpful.